afternoon. Afternoon. We appreciate you coming. Can you give me your phone number so that when we make our decision, we'll be able to contact you? It probably will be after hours. Sure. The uh, best way is my cell. It's 321-863-5185. Okay. And what we're going to do today is give you a chance to make a three-minute opening when you see my hand go up, that means you got 30 seconds left. Okay. And then there'll be some questions, and then at the end, we'll let you do a two-minute closing. Great. So you're on the clock. Go for all it. Right. Thank you all very much for giving me the opportunity today. I'm uh, normally very uncomfortable talking about myself, but uh, in this setting, I do think it's important to share with you some of my personal history and work history, things that I'm particularly proud of. Um, <clears throat> I understand there's a fine line between being proud of your accomplishments and sounding boastful. I certainly hope that uh, nothing that I say or do today makes any of you think that I've crossed that line in any way. Uh, I'm born and raised in, in Brevard County, and except for the time I was off of college, I've lived there my whole life. Uh, married my wife Elizabeth almost 21 years now. She's the smartest attorney I've ever met in my life. <clears throat> We've got three great kids, uh, two teenage boys, and then our normal child. My little girl. My boys are 14 and 16. They're 6'3 six, and 6'6. Six, six. And as you might imagine, they spend their lives on the basketball court. Uh, my daughter's 10. She's into dance and drama and theater. But you get her on the court against her brothers, and she gives them all they can handle. Uh, my wife is truly a special person. Uh, she's an appellate attorney. In fact, she clerked for Judge Anton uh, when he was here on the 5th District. And she's had her own private practice since that time. Her services are in constant demand, but she takes very few cases these days because she has chosen to basically set aside her own goals and her own career so that I can work towards achieving my goals. And I can honestly say, <coughs> excuse me, without hesitation, I wouldn't be where I am. I certainly wouldn't be here in front of you all if it were not for the sacrifices of Elizabeth. Um, so I'm very proud of her. Um, I'm also very proud that I've, I've tried to stay true to, to who I've always been. I'm still the same person that I've always been. I still drive an old beat up pickup truck and I still look forward to going fishing with my dad. Well, these days I end up taking him fishing instead of the other way around. That'll, that would not happen. Um, I still hang around with the same friends I've had since high school. Uh, it's not that I particularly like any of them. It's just hard to find a group of guys that's bad at golf as I am. Uh, as far as work, I'm very proud to be a circuit judge. I've worked very hard to get to that point. When I was appointed in 2002, I was one of the youngest, if not the youngest judge in the state of Florida at that time. And in the last 10 years, I've uh, presided over thousands of cases, everything from shoplifting and traffic tickets up to multi-million dollar medical negligence cases uh, and first degree murder death penalty cases. Uh, so I've got a, a wide range of experience I've earned the respect of the judges that appear in front of me. I attach to my application the results of the 2008-2010 poll that's done by the attorneys. Um, just last night, I actually got the results of the 2012 uh, bar poll. I wish I'd had this a couple weeks ago because I certainly would have attached those. I did very well on that poll. Again, I attached the results because I did well. I'm proud of how I did. Go ahead and wrap up. I don't want you to not say something. But, well, I just want to... Just to summarize the, the results of the 2012, because I did not get a chance to attach them. On all the categories where the judges were, were rated, I had the highest average of every judge in my circuit, right, in Brevard County. And on the, the goal that, or the uh, item that I think is most relevant, which is legal reasoning and ability to always follow the law, I had the highest score of every judge in my circuit. And I'm, I'm very proud of those results. Again, I say these things not to, to be boastful in any way, but because I am proud of who I am and where I'm from, and what I've been able to accomplish. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Uh, who wants to start? Please start. Go for it. Uh, first of all, <coughs> thank you for the book. <laughs> I think it's probably one of the largest books we've seen here today. So. And actually, it was interesting. I didn't know about the 2012 that you just indicated. And I was going to ask you, uh, looking at the 2010, obviously, and I looked at the ones previous to that. Do you have consistently either one or number two? Uh, and uh, the categories, 14 of them in total. My question is this, understanding that you're very good at that, how would you take those skill sets and apply them to this position? Well, being an appellate judge is very different than being a trial judge. Uh, in my current position, I have to make the decision. I mean, everything stops in my lap. 
and the, uh, the appellate court decisions are uh, collegiality is demanded. So what I think I've been able to accomplish with the judges I work with is a degree of collegiality. I work very closely with the judges. I've been selected and trained and certified by the Supreme Court as a, a judicial mentor, meaning I, I train the new judges when they come on board. Even those who are more seasoned in life, as you might say, than, than I am. Um, I am constantly calling other judges and asking them their advice and their opinions. Uh, even judges that are new on the bench, I'll call them and I'll say, hey, what would you do in this case? And we've got judges who've been on the bench 20, 25 years, and they'll call me and say, John, this is what came up today. What do you think? What would you do? On the appellate court, I think to be an effective judge on the appellate level, I mean, those decisions are made by majority vote, only two to one. So you have to be persuasive. You have to be able to convince at least one other person on that panel that you have thoroughly read those briefs and you understand the arguments and you get the law and that your application of law to those facts is sound uh, way to go. You have to be able to convince somebody of that and be confident in your ability to do that. At the same time, you have to be willing to acknowledge that your colleagues on the bench might have a different point of view than you. They might have a different perspective. They might pick up on something that you missed. And their analysis of, of the law, frankly, might be more legally uh, sound than yours and you have to be willing to respect that and acknowledge that. So I think to be an effective judge at the appellate level, uh, you have to be, first of all, able to persuade others and also willing to be persuaded. And those are characteristics of trait that I think I'll have to bring to the bench. Any other questions? Jim? Yes, judge, uh, Jim that's Swarm. thank you for being here thank today. You, sir. <clears throat> Obviously with your background and having grown up knowing the 50th CA very well, uh, tell me something that you think, in your opinion, and obviously you've got great experience at the circuit court level, but something that you might have to work on as you transition to the 50th CA. Well, one of, one of the areas that uh, I, I found that I had to work on when I first went on the circuit bench was time management. I, I didn't recognize, as a county judge, how much at the circuit level your time is in demand constantly. And it was a mistake on my part to schedule hearings from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock all day. And you have to recognize that you do need time to review files, to look at the cases you've taken under advisement, to sign your orders and write your judgments and get all those things out. And I wasn't very good at that, to be honest with you. So I've talked to other judges in my district. Um, I've talked to some of the JAs. I've talked to the attorneys. And what I've done to address that is I, I carve out about one afternoon every week where I can just devote that purely to signing my orders and getting my rulings out. I think that's very important and I've taken what was, I think, an area of weakness at one point in my judicial abilities and it's now an area of strength and the, the new bar poll that just came out, I think, uh, shows that because on areas of, most judges did fairly well on either their ability to get hearing time or their ability to get their orders out in a timely manner, one or the other. I have the highest score on both, which I think is, is pretty uh, unique and I'm very proud of that. In fact, that's probably the result of the poll that I'm most proud of because it shows that the work that I did to improve my time management has paid off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Espen. Yeah, uh, my name is Lee Bennett. Yes, sir. Uh, you obviously have done a, a really fine job as a, as a judge in 18. My question is 